Now, if you work with clients, building websites, those kinds of things, chances are part of the process is going to be to help educate them and show them how to get the most out of the platform. This can be something that's time consuming, expensive, or logistically problematic when it comes to the whole global situation and the pandemic right now. Well, today I'm going to be showing you a lifetime deal from AppSumo that could help you solve those problems. We're going to take a look at Useful. This is a platform that allows us to create our own custom onboarding, training, education, those kinds of things, and implement that directly into the site or the application that you're using. Best of all, it's very, very easy to use and very, very easy to input into any kind of website. So let's take a look at the deal on AppSumo and then take a look at how you can start to use it. Okay, so this is the deal on AppSumo. Currently there's 20 reviews and it's five taco reviews, so that's pretty good. Now, with all these kinds of deals, I would always recommend checking out the feedback on there, checking out the questions and the answers to see how responsive the developers are behind any given product and use all this information to decide whether it's something you want to put your money into. So with that being said, let's take a quick look at the different tiers and what you get. So I grabbed the tier one and the only real difference between all of these different plans and they go right the way up to tier four is the number of team members and the number of assists per month. Now the assists are basically, each assist would be running that wizard, should we say, one time. So if you have one client logs into their front end dashboard, they go through the little wizard, it's one time. So 5,000 in my case, more than enough. But if you want to jump up, you can go to 5, 10, 20, and so on, right the way up through to tier four, which gives you 50,000. You can also remove the useful watermark across any of the tiers. So if you don't want any branding on there, you can delete that, get rid of that completely. That's pretty cool. And you also got team members. So if you are part of an agency or you have a couple of people, you might want to outsource how to run this and install it and so on. The team members are going to be kind of useful for you there as well. For me, it's just me. So I don't really care too much about it. Like I say, you can see there's currently 20 reviews on there and it's a five tackle review. So it comes back pretty good. Again, with all of these things, and this is a little sort of power tip for you when it comes to dealing with AppSumo, when you see reviews, and if they're all glowing reviews, the first thing I always do is look to see how many deals this particular person has bought. If you find that a lot of the feedback is one deal being bought, eh, you kind of have to take it with a grain of sand. But all these are pretty good. 51 deals, 6 deals, 68 deals. You kind of get the feel that these are people that have bought plenty of things on AppSumo. So with that being said, I grabbed it. Let's go ahead, log into my dashboard and take a little look at how useful actually works. Okay, so when you log into your account, it's a relatively simple kind of setup. You can see on the left-hand side, we've got tours, smart tips, checklists, install it on your site, preview the plugin and so on. Across the top, you've got content, reports, themes, and marketplace. We'll take a look at the key ones inside there. And also you can see we've got our content. So we've got things like tours, smart tips, checklists, and so on. And if you want inspiration for different ways in which you can use Useful, then there's a couple of options underneath and some articles on how to get started. As you can see, my assists this month have been one out of 5,000. That's me testing things out. So let me show you how it works. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tours. Now I've already created one tour. It's currently in draft, but I've tested this and it works perfectly. This is for my Learn Plus platform, which is the training platform that I use to deliver the training courses that I do. So what I wanted is something that when someone logs in, they could see how the interface works and the various different parts of it. So this is kind of what I've done. It's a really simple setup. If we take a look, the interface is broken down into various key components. The first is your tour flow. In other words, this is first thing happens at the top, the second thing happens next, third thing, fourth thing, fifth thing, those kinds of things. And these can be various different kinds of things. They can be pop-ups, they can be little sort of pointers, they can be different things. You can see how we can set the tour itself to start. So if we click on the little wrench icon, you can see we can configure this, we can give it a name. Do we want to use this to all pages and users? Do you want to segment this on certain pages and so on? What are the triggers? So you can have this to launch automatically the first time someone logs in, or you can have an icon, a button that someone clicks on to launch the tour. Generally, I would recommend if you're going to get people that are not necessarily used to a platform or tool that you're using, clients, those kinds of things, I would probably recommend using the automatic option. But if you want to give people the ability to not have to do that and click if they want to, then you can use the manual option. You've then got a couple of options underneath for settings. So things like show it to each user just once. So this is one of those things that you don't want to keep bombarding them with exactly the same kind of 
tour of how to get started. So one time is probably gonna be more than enough. You can do things like remember the last steps. If you have a very long process for your tour flow, then you can set this up so it'll store it. So if they kind of give up halfway to do something else, they can come back and carry on where they left off and not either have no tour to go back to, or they can just sort of have to go back at the beginning. You get the picture. Do you wanna show the progress so people can see how far they are into your tour? And then you can choose a couple of different kind of progress types, dots, step numbers, those kinds of things. Then you've got show useful button. So this is the button that allows people to see access via the bottom right hand corner. So this is where they can click to open up the tour manually. And you can change the tour label on there if you want to. And you can also use custom themes and you can create your own custom themes by just simply going into the themes option, customizing this. So if you had different client sites, you could easily use this then with custom branding, colors, those kinds of things to make sure it sits and perfectly inside the area that you're using it, whether that's a, a commercial product, a SaaS like Learn Plus, or if it's something you created yourself like a custom dashboard, those kinds of things. Okay, so once that's all set up, we're gonna close that down and then we can take a look at the tour itself. So again, if we click on any of these wrenches, we can edit that particular step. So if we choose this one, you can see it will open up in the right hand section and show us what this step will look like. If we click on the next step, you can see there's the next one, the third one, those kinds of things. You've also got the three little dots that allow you then to go in and duplicate or delete that particular step. So if things are very, very similar, you just wanna change a couple of parameters, you could duplicate it, or you could delete it if you've done something you didn't actually need on there. You can also go in then and add a step, and you can see currently there are five different kinds of steps, pointers, modal, slide out, redirects, and delays. So we've got things like a pointer. A pointer is what I currently have on screen at the moment. You can see there's an arrow on the right-hand side, but you've got options on how you wanna set this up. You then have all the step settings available to you in this sort of middle section. So you can see with the available courses, which is what this is, I've got these different options. If I go to your account, you can see it's another pointer option. So there we can go ahead, we can set up a title for this, or we can just hide the title if we don't want those on there. You can choose the type from pointer, modal, and slide out, and so on. You can position this, so you can see we've got positions against screen or against an element. An element is basically like a CSS element, and you can attach this to it. And there's a great little plugin or extension you can use for Chrome that allows you to very easily open up the page that you're working on, that you want to have your sort of tour on there, and then you can just sort of click, and it'll then copy the relevant code, and you can just simply paste that into here. I'll show you that a little later. Now, speaking of the element, this is the code that I'm talking about. You can see there it is, and we've also got this little select an element option, which will open up that sort of Chrome extension. Do you want to highlight it? This will put a highlight box around it, and again, I'll show you this when I give you a demonstration of how this works. We've then got orientation. You can choose between your top, bottom, left, right, or you can set this to automatic, and then the arrow will point to the element that you've selected without you having to figure out where you want it. So if screen sizes are something that are gonna change, you can kind of cater for that by using the automatic option. Then we've got progress. You can click anywhere on screen, or you can click on various different things. So I like to have the anywhere on screen so people can just click and go to the next step. Do you want to run a default action? And then you've got advanced triggers. So you can see we can set things up inside you to get a little bit more advanced on how this will actually be triggered to work. So you can see the URL equals. So we got specific URLs inside there that have to be sort of used to trigger this particular step. You've then got the element you want to target and the element event. And again, you've got lots of options inside there. So when the user clicks an element or you move your mouse over it, it'll pop up. You kind of get where I'm coming from with this. There's a lot of controls inside there to really fine tune and hone this. Let's just disable the trigger, we don't want that. You've got auto skip and you've got collect feedback. So auto skip, we could enable that. And the auto skip is the property is enabled, the step is skipped when the element or trigger element isn't available. So if you've got something that might show up or might not show up on a page, you could set this that if it doesn't show up, you'll skip this step so it doesn't kind of give this misleading, weird kind of step that doesn't exist on the page. And your collect feedback option is enables this to a step to collect user feedback. If you enable that, you can see we can get these little sort of happy meh, and unhappy kind of faces. So pretty cool to see that. Great if you are testing this out with some beta testers, should we say, and you want to get their feedback, you can have that, you can see it. And that's basically all there is to creating these. You can see when we come over to any of these steps, 
This is a typical text area, graphic area. You've got all those sort of functions to customize it, to insert images, insert videos in there. So this is what I'm saying when, if you create something unique for a client, this is such a good way of guiding them around how to use it. And if you have that little button so they can get help at any point, and if you want to set up some of the advanced triggers, you really could get an amazing sort of tour through how to use your product or service. And as you can see, we can drop images in there, we can rotate them, crop them, scale them, do all those kinds of things, we can format our text. There's lots and lots of options inside you. It's an incredibly easy tool to use, but has a lot of really useful features. So that's how you go about creating your content. You've then got reports, which if you want to, you can see this will give you a report about how many assists you've had in the month, how many tours were started, how many were completed. You know, you can kind of get a view report and this will give you all information about it. So if you want to track all this info, you can do that inside you, including that user feedback if you enable it. So you can even see how good your flows are to make sure that when you create something, you are helping people out enough. And you might find in there, there are certain parts where people don't understand it. They might give it a negative or a, you know don't really care. You can refine it. You kind of get where I'm going with this. Okay, so then your themes. This is the theme that I've already created that ties in with my Learn Plus platform. So if you open that up, you can see inside there, we can choose to give it a name. We can go ahead then set your primary colors, your hover colors, those kinds of things. And you can see you get a visual representation of this on screen. You can also set up the fonts that you want to use, or you can let this pick up and adapt from the application that you're using it in, which is quite cool. And if you want to, you want to get really sort of granular with this, you can also go ahead and add in your own custom CSS. And there's lots of information about how to attach the classes and how to set things up using the find out more. So there's lots of options there to show, show you. So you really can get stuck in and create something truly unique that's totally on brand with whatever it is you're using this on. And then we've also got the marketplace, which is not something that I really use. This is kind of other tools that work alongside this that you can kind of get access to and you have to pay for them. I mean, I use Automize, I've got that one and you know, you kind of get the picture. So that's the basics of it. Let's go back to our content. Now let's go take a look at this on an actual site. Okay, so I've logged into my dashboard for my account and you can see I've got the view tool button in the bottom corner. This is there so I can test things out. Once I click to open that up, this now tells us that we've got a course tour. We're going to get some information about how to use the platform. So we'll start our tour and you can see this is where it now highlights the particular section we're talking to. The arrow points to it. It gives us that information so we can see that. We can click to go to the next section, which is your available courses. And again, this highlights it now so we can see exactly how all of this works. Now, this is a really simple example. There's just literally three steps, but I can expand this. And then when I go to the next section, when people log in and they go to access the course, there'll be another one of these that'll show them how to use the course. But how do we go about actually inserting it into our website? Well, let me quickly show you. If we go back into Useful, let's go ahead now and grab the code that we need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and grab that information. So let's save and exit this. And all we can do is say install to your site. We're gonna select it. And you can see we can choose to use this on anonymous users or logged in users. And there's various different reasons why you may want to use one over the other. For this example, we're just gonna do anonymous visitors. We don't wanna mess about too much. Let's select that. And then that will give us a little block of code. And again, you can see we want to segment users, target specific languages, those kinds of things. So there's even more things you could do with this. For now, we'll keep this as it is. Now let's hop over. Now I'm using Thrivecart for this, but any tool you use, WordPress anywhere, all you need to do is put this little block of code inside the body tag. How you want to do that, you can use a sort of code injector, you know, something like code snippets. Or in this example, all we need to do is go over into Thrivecart and I'm gonna just grab this HTML block. We'll pop that at the top. This is totally invisible on the page. All we need to do then is drop this little bit of code in, hit done, save our page. That's it done. We now have access to that. So what I just shown you, which is if I go and refresh this, and we start the tour again, you can see we started off all over again. And that's literally what we've done is we just inserted this into the header of this page. We now have access to that inside this particular page. And then the rest of the site, where we don't have that bit of code, it's not gonna show up. So it's pretty cool how easy it is to use. Okay, so I said earlier on in the video that I'd show you how you can go ahead and you can use the Chrome extension to grab the relevant 
ID code and things like that for where you want to target a particular element in the design of a page inside Useful. So I've already gone ahead and installed the little extension. You can find this information in the dashboard of Useful. They'll give you all the info inside there. So once that's there, you can see I'm already logged into Useful, which you need to be to get this to work. So what we're going to do is we click Open Panel. So now if we go back to Useful, all we need to do is open our tour up. And you can see inside there, we've got the options for where we want to use this. So for example, if we go to add a step in, we're going to add another pointer. We're not going to worry about putting anything inside there, but we're going to say point against an element. So we need to do that. Then we need to find the element we want to point against. So let's just click this little select an element. So you can see, give the page that will be open a special mode that enables you to select the element. So what we need to do is grab the URL for that page. So let's go back to our page. We'll copy that from there. We'll come back in and drop that inside there and we'll say open page. So that's now opened the page. You can see we get this little bar at the bottom, which allows us to switch between two different modes. We can switch between the normal navigation mode or we can go into the select mode. Now we want to be in select mode because obviously we want to select the element we want to use to target. So let's just say that I want to grab, for example, this section on the left hand side. We'll select it and you can see that now automatically inserts that in there for us. Pretty cool. So now we've done that, we can go ahead and do whatever we want with this and that will now target itself to that particular element inside the page that we've actually inserted the HTML code into. It really is very, very simple. When you're finished, you can simply stop previewing and close that down if you want to, and you are pretty much done. But that's kind of how you get started using Useful. For me, I really like this. There's so many use cases in which I can use it for both online sort of training aids to help people see how to use a particular platform. In this example, I'm talking about Thrivecart Learns Plus. But if you're creating front-end dashboards or you were just creating WooCommerce stores and you literally wanted to give someone a step-by-step -step guide how to use various different parts of that interface without you needing to give them training, especially if they didn't in a different language, I think Useful is a really good option. The price point is pretty appealing. And the fact it's a lifetime deal, I think it's one of those ones that's worth hopping onto. So that's just my opinion. I grabbed it. I'm going to be keeping this one. I might even get the next level up so I've got even more scope when I can sort of take a look at other platforms and things that I want to use. But that's just my opinion. Have you tried Useful? Has this kind of opened your eyes to what you could use it for, giving you some use cases? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.